Remembering the life of a Bucks legend. We'll tell you how Tampa Bay is paying tribute to Leroy Settlement when the news begins in 60 seconds. The Rooms to Go 20th Anniversary Sale is back. And it's better. Because whatever beautiful furniture you choose, you can finance now, interest-free, until January 2016. There's no money down and no interest adding up. Because Rooms to Go pays your interest until January 2016. Oven Gold Turkey is a magnet for sandwich thieves. Uh -huh. Not today, Chef. Every day, you switch my boar's head oven gold with your cheap turkey made of ground up peat and fat and seaweed extract. Seaweed, Jeffrey. You will not today. Today, I win. Boar's head oven gold turkey. Compromise elsewhere. This is the Fox 13 10 o'clock news. Tonight, a devastating loss for the Tampa Bay community. Bucks Hall of Famer Leroy Selman passes away at the age of 56, just two days after he suffered a massive stroke at his home in Tampa. Good evening, I'm Deborah Bowden. And I'm Lloyd Sowers. Thanks for joining us tonight. Leroy Selman was truly one of the Bucks' all-time greats. He went to six straight Pro Bowls, and in 1995, he was named to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But Selman's influence extended far beyond the impressive numbers he put up on the football field. He was a tireless leader in the community. A chain of restaurants bears his name, as does Tampa's Selman Crosstown Expressway. Tonight, the Tampa Bay Bucks released a statement. It says, in part, Leroy's standing as the first buck in the Hall of Fame surely distinguished him. But his stature off the field as the consummate gentleman put him in another stratosphere. Put simply, says the Bucks statement, he was first class. He was the real deal. He certainly was. Leroy Selman earned a place in Bucks history even before he ever stepped onto the field. He was the team's first ever draft pick in 1976. Kevin O'Donnell joins us now with a look back at the incredible legacy Selman leaves behind. Well, Deborah, on the field, Leroy Selman was a giant. Teams attempted to stop him with two, even three players. They were unsuccessful most of the time. Leroy Selman was the first buck. First Buccaneer elected into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He was equally successful making an impact in the Tampa Bay community. Chris Field takes a look back at the man we all knew as number 63. Leroy Selman was the Bucks' top draft pick in 1976. He played his entire nine-year NFL career with the Bucks. The defensive end was a six-time Pro Bowler, the 1979 Defensive Player of the Year. Leroy Selman stripped it away. Leroy Selman was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1995. He was the first member of the Bucks Ring of Honor in 2000. I look at these jerseys in my hand, and I think about a Ring of Honor, and I circle, and I feel like I'm in the with so many of those people that have just impacted my life in a real strong type of way. That fall, I spent time with Leroy at his original Selman's restaurant in Tampa, reminiscing, looking at family pictures and memorabilia. You know, you just got to keep that, that positive attitude so that you keep working hard. Number 63, the only Bucks jersey ever retired. To this day, Leroy Selman remains the Bucks' only Hall of Fame player, also the best to ever play for Oklahoma. And Leroy touched so many people around the Tampa Bay community. Jimmy Giles played with Leroy from 1978 to 1984. He will join Leroy in the Bucks Ring of Honor this fall. Off the field, they've been great friends. The two just talked on the day that Selman suffered the stroke on Friday. And I talked with Jimmy on the phone tonight about his memories of Leroy Selman, the man. He had a personality like none other that I've ever met in my entire life because once you meet him, you just can't believe a guy could be that nice. And I was just extremely, and am extremely proud to, to have known him and to have been just a small part of his life because, you know, I know I could call him at any time and he would, he would pick up the phone and we could talk, man. We just talked two days ago for over an hour just, just talking about things, man. And, and that was, I felt better afterwards. And uh, I, I'm extremely sad that he's gone. And I, I just feel for the family and just, 
you know, hope God can bless him and keep him. I also talked with Doug Williams tonight from his home in Louisiana just a few minutes after he found out the news. He confirmed the passing of Leroy Selman. And Williams was just too broken up to talk on air with us. He did say this. It's just something that no one can control. It's hitting him particularly hard because both are the same age. 56, Deborah. 56, quite young, quite young. You know, you knew Leroy for so long, and we keep coming back to this. As fierce as he was on the field in person, he was just a genuinely nice guy, a real gentleman. And uh, that never really changed over the years, did it? Not at all, Deborah. I remember this story that uh, the late John McKay told me. Early in Leroy's career, he was playing the Chicago Bears in Chicago. And the Bears knew the best way to beat the Bucs was to take Leroy Selman out of the game. So they kept going at his knees. He came to the sideline and said, Coach, they're trying to hurt me. And McKay just looked at him and said, Leroy, this is the NFL. That was the type of person he was. He always believed the best in people. He never had ill feeling about anyone, never thought anyone had anything negative that uh, he wanted to address. And just he was just a genuinely nice person. And that's how he lived his life. Always played fair, too. All right. Thanks very much, Kevin O'Donnell, for us tonight. Selman's family and former teammates have been stopping by St. Joseph's Hospital all weekend. They say Leroy was a gifted athlete and an even better friend. Fox 13's Anthony Miller is live outside the hospital where Selman passed away this afternoon, surrounded by his family. He was, Anthony. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Lloyd. I can tell you, we've been here outside of St. Joseph's Hospital since about 6 this evening. And if you've ever been to the emergency room, you know it's common to see a steady stream of people coming and going. And tonight has certainly been no exception. But from where we're standing, where they've assembled the collective media, we haven't seen any sign of any Selman family or friends. And that really comes as no surprise since a statement released by the hospital on behalf of the Selman family asked for privacy during this very tough time. That statement went on to read, and I quote, to us, Leroy was the rock of our family. This has been a sudden and shocking event, and we are devastated by this unexpected loss. We deeply appreciate the prayers and support shown by family, friends, the football community, and the public over the past two days. Now, we've also learned that Leroy Selman's body will be flown to Oklahoma, his native Oklahoma, where he will be buried. And Lloyd, just one more thing. Very often when you're out in the field and people see a live truck, they see a light, they see cameras, they walk up and they, cause they wanna know what's going on. When I've told people here tonight that I'm here reporting on the death of Leroy Selman, immediately people become upset, sad, shocked. And, you know, that probably has a lot to do with the fact that he was a very good football player, but I believe it has more to do with the fact that he was just a wonderful man. As we've been saying all night, this is a tremendous loss for the Tampa Bay region. Lloyd? It really is. He touched so many lives. Anthony Miller reporting live for us. In fact, we just got a statement from Tampa Mayor Bob Buckhorn. He says, in Leroy Selman, the, the, the heart of a lion, but off the field, the gentleness of a lamb. The mayor said he embodied everything that is right about athletics and carried himself with a dignity and a grace that reflected his faith and his family. Also tonight, heartbroken fans are reacting to the news of Leroy Selman's death. He meant so much to the community, as we've been saying, both on the field and off. It's obviously a terrible shock. I, you know, at first we thought he was going to be pulling through, but now apparently not. It's, it's a sad day. He uh, was just such a, a big man, um, a, you know, a community leader. Um, you know, his performance on the field speaks for itself. Oh, he was a huge icon. I mean, definitely an icon and a role model. Definitely be missed. Well, it's been a roller coaster of emotions this weekend for the University of South Florida as well. Selman was the school's athletic director for several years, and his death comes just one day after the football team pulled off a huge victory at Notre Dame. The university's president and athletic director met with reporters just a few moments ago, and Fox 13's Josh Cassio is live at USF tonight. Josh, how is the team paying tribute to Leroy Selman? It, it's really hit everyone so hard. It has, and you know, there was a much more somber tone here at USF than you might expect after that big win at Notre Dame. But you know, the loss of Leroy Selman's huge for Tampa Bay, huge for USF. He had such close ties to the school. He served as athletic director, led a number of fundraising efforts. And you know what? Without Leroy Selman's, there may not even be football at USF. USF President Judy Genshaft says the school is devastated by the loss, and she says without him, the school might not be where it is today. Let's play some more from that press conference that wrapped up just a short time ago. We're going to start off with head coach 
Skip Holtz. There are not very many people that can make an impact on the student athletes the way Leroy has. And, and I say that um, there, are, there are tears in that room. I mean, in, in our meeting with our players, there are some people that are, that are, I mean, that he is not just say hi to, you know, but as they understand what a special man that he, that he is, that he was, that the impact that he had on so many people. We're a better university because of Leroy Selman. He cared about all of our student athletes, and it didn't matter what sport they, the students were in. He cared about all of them, and he built an incredible legacy, and he will never be forgotten. I've lost a, a special friend uh, and a colleague, and uh, would tell you that, that Leroy Selman, not saying everything that's right about football, but he stands for everything that's right in life. And, uh, you know, I've never been around a guy with any more class and any more integrity uh, ever than, than Leroy Selman. Now, Deborah, you mentioned the school paying tribute to Leroy Selman. They say they are going to do that, but they're going to talk to the family first. So they didn't announce exactly what they're going to do. Hopefully we'll learn about that in the near future. Again, though, a big loss here at the school and a lot of heavy hearts here on campus after news of the passing of Leroy Selman. Deborah. Leroy really put USF on the map, uh, especially the sports teams and football. And as, as you mentioned, our, our hearts go out to his family tonight. Thank you so much. Josh Cassio reporting live for us tonight at USF. And stay with Fox 13 for continuing coverage of the death of Leroy Selman. We'll bring you any information on the tributes and the memorial services as fans mourn the passing of this Bucks legend. Well, Tropical Storm Lee also making news.